Hello and uh, welcome back to uh, the second part of uh, the APS tutorial, or my APS tour. Um, and uh, today, uh, or in this video, I want to cover uh, making a very basic functional APS cannon. So uh, in the previous video I talked about all the individual parts. Um, in this video I want to put some of those parts together to make a, make a cannon that actually works, that actually does something. So. Um, yeah, uh, also, uh, before I start, we've got, uh, uh, got a couple of things to mention in the previous video. In the previous video, I, uh, I forgot to mention with the, uh, I forgot to advance cannons, um, with the, in the barrels, I forgot to mention with the bore evacuation and the muzzle brake, I forgot to mention that you could own, you can only have one of these on your gun, so you can only have one bore evacuator. Uh, you can't have uh, more than one bore evacuator, and you can't have more than one muzzle brake. You can have a bore evacuator as well as a muzzle brake, but you can't have two muzzle brakes or two bore evacuators. Um, yeah, and uh, also uh, the previous video was, uh, the, the length of the video was uh, quite long, it was an hour and ten minutes, and that's just because there are loads of, loads of parts for the advanced cannons, and I, I wanted to cover all of it in one video as best as I could. Um, but uh, according to my uh, YouTube analytics, the uh, um, the average uh, retention time for that video was about 10 minutes. So uh, obviously I, I think an hour and 10 minutes was a bit too long. So uh, I'm hoping with this video that it will be a bit shorter. Um, I've got much less, much, much less content to cover in this video, so I'm hoping that it will be much, much quicker. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to you know hop right in. So, uh, how to make a very, very basic uh, functional APS cannon? So, uh, I'm going to make the this cannon on a on a turret. So, I'm just going to start with a, a very basic uh, one axis, one meter turret. It's going to be a very, very small APS cannon, and it's just going to be barely functional. So, um, we're going to start. So, now we're editing the turret. So on the turret, we want to start with, uh, for the advanced cannon, we want to start with the main firing piece. So um, I'm just going to place that one down on the turret. And uh, um, also, uh, for, the, for this uh, gun, we need to decide on a gauge. So we want to go with a, a, a set gauge. So I think with, uh, so for this gun here, I'm going to go with, a, 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 say, a gauge of 100. So we want to go for a gauge of 100 millimeters. So if you look at the APS firing piece currently, it's a gauge of 60 millimeters, which is uh, less than what we want. So we want to increase the gauge, and the way that we do that is we use a, a gauge increaser. Uh, we plunk that one on the background, on the back there, and uh, th that there is connected. And now, if you look at it, it's got a gauge of 120 millimeters. 120 millimeters is not what we want. We want 100 millimeters. So if I open the menu for this, go on to the advanced projectile system and go down to the desired shell gauge. The desired shell gauge allows me to set the gauge of the gun. So if I type in here 100 and close this down, you can see that the gauge now is set to 100, which is exactly what we want. Um, another thing to mention with the, this option here with the desired shell gauge, you cannot set this desired shell gauge higher than what you would get from the uh, the gauge increases. So if I set this, I've got this set to desired shell gauge to 500 millimeters, but it's only set to 120 millimeters. That's because that's what you can get with one gauge increaser. So I'll set that back to 100 millimeters. And uh, next thing I'll need to do is I'll need to put on a manlet. So for this, I'm going to put on the one meter elevation mallet. Um, I did go over the, the mallets in the previous video, and I said why I don't like the Omni mallet. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so uh, I want to go with the one meter elevation mallet, and the reason I want to go with that over instead of the one meter uh, Omni mallet, I sort of explained in the previous video that the uh, the one meter elevation mantlet um, for a turret uh, for a gun that's on a turret, the elevation mantlet is pretty much superior in every way, shape, and form to the uh, Omni mantlet. 
So anyway, now we got our manlet, we want to put some barrels on it. So for this, I want to go with some. I'm just going to go with uh, maybe, maybe let's go with eight meter the barrels. That's probably good enough. So just two lots of the four meter barrels. So it's got eight meters of barrels. So that there is the the very basic gun. But now we need to decide, well now we need to create a shell for this gun to fire. Uh, we need to create a custom shell for this gun to fire. Now I'm not going to go into uh, the exact details or whatnot of how to do the, the custom shells, at least not in this video. Might do it in the next video. Um, so for this, uh, to create a custom shell you're going to need the uh, these, these parts down here, the ammo controller, ammo customizer and and the, the, the ammo customizer parts, um, uh, as I showed in the previous video, and we're going to need to connect them. So I think for this one, we'll just go with a, a six-segment shell, and um, so uh, I'll just go with. I think we'll just go with um, uh, just, just generic high explosive. That's probably good enough. So I'll put on some high explosive on this. So we just got gunpowder high explosive. Very very basic. Thrown together shell. Not going to worry about worry too much about it. Um, just going to go back to the gun. So now we need to get this uh, get this shell to load into this gun. So to do that, we're going to need uh, these ammo input feeders. So what ammo input feeders do, as I explained in the previous video, uh, they take ammo uh, they take uh, ammo from your ship and turn it into a a custom shell that you've made. And put it into the gun, or put it into whatever they're attached to. Um, for this gun here, I'm going to attach the uh, um, ammo input feeders. I'm going to attach them directly to the firing piece. And um, by uh, you can't attach uh, if you're attaching. Uh, so I'm not using the autoloaders for this one. If you uh, are putting the ammo input feeders on directly onto the firing piece. And you don't want to use the auto loaders, then you can only attach them uh, to the firing piece itself. You cannot attach them to the gauge snake. So uh, you can only attach it to the firing piece itself. So I will attach, I'll just attach three of them there. So I've got three of these ammo intakes connected to the firing piece. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, open the menu. So uh, I want to open the menu for this uh, ammo intake. And as we can see in the menu, we've got um, we've got the various different uh, ammo controllers, the various different you know, custom shells. Because this is the only custom shell on the vehicle, or the only custom shell being that one there that we just made, uh, we want to select it, and it will make the, this ammo input feeder. It will make this ammo input feeder put this shell into this gun. And uh, if I uh, click, uh, if I now click the force assign all intakes to this ammo source button. What that will do is it will um, it will make the other ammo intakes uh, put that custom shell in as well. Now that we've uh, assigned these ammo intakes to the uh, custom shell, we can now um, we can now uh, this gun is now functional. Technically, this gun is now functional. So if we go uh, hop, you know, move my avatar over to the gun and switch it to the manual control I can now move the gun around and if I press the button to fire the gun will fire which is uh, nice so this here is well a, a functional gun so if I fire the gun and I press caps log by default uh, it will allow me allow the camera to follow the shout so if I press uh, button to fire and press caps log, it will let the camera follow the shell. So you can see this is a pretty fast shell and it's pretty small and it's just generic high explosive. Yeah, just some high explosive warheads. And um, if I, um, you know, so it's nothing particularly impressive, but that there is a functional gun. So now, um, something else I want to do in this video is I want to do autoloaders. I want to do a very basic gun with uh, a couple autoloaders. So I want to build another gun. Uh, if I go new objects, go the one axis turret. So very similar to that gun there, I want to build another gun. And I want to put on, a, in the exact same way, I want to build 
uh, the, the main firing piece. I want to, uh, oh, the UI is bugged out there. As you can see, it says APS shell. That there's the, the shell that was fired just now. Uh, from his caps log. There we go, the UI's fixed itself now. There we go, so now you can see the APS firing piece stats there, which is what we want. Anyway, for this gun here, we want uh, to do the exact same as what we did for the other ones. So we want one gauge increaser, we want to set the desired shell gauge to 100 millimeters, and we want to also put a manlet on the front, we'll put the elevation manlet on, and we'll put on 8 meters of barrels, just the same, and we'll put on uh, autoloaders. So uh, with the autoloaders, uh, as I show, as I demonstrated in the previous video, I showed the different lengths of autoloaders, um, you need to decide on what length of autoloader we want to go with. Um, the, the, the length of autoloader that we want to go with is generally designed, uh, or you know, it's, you, we generally want to go with an autoloader that's the, that's, um, that will fit the shell that we're firing. So an 8 meter autoloader can fire anything less, uh, or a shell that's less than 8 meters, whilst a 1 meter autoloader can fire a shell that's less than 1 meter. Uh, that's in terms of length not the uh, diameter of the shell, which is what the gauge is. So the length of a shell, to figure out the length of the shell, this shell here is six segments. Uh, to work out the length of the shell, you need to know the number of segments, the shell being six segments, and to, you need to know the gauge, which is 100 millimeters. And what you do is you multiply the two together to work out the length of the shell. So six segments and 100 millimeters, that will give you 600 millimeters uh, for the length of the shell. 600 millimetres is less than one metre, one metre being 1,000 millimetres. So this shell will fit in the side of a one metre autoloader. So that's what we use. We'll use a one metre autoloader. We'll use one, one metre autoloaders. Um, and, oh, hello. Uh, just deleted the, uh, the gauge increaser there. Um, okay. Uh, if I go back to the autoloaders and put on a one metre autoloader, Right, okay. So with the autoloaders, you can attach the, one, uh, the autoloaders to either the gauge snake, or you can attach it directly to the firing piece. Or, as a third option, you can attach the autoloaders to themselves. Um, which is, uh, yeah, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach three of them like I did just now, um, just, on the, just on the back. And uh, something else I'll do with these autoloaders is I'm going to use clips with these autoloaders. You can use autoloaders without clips, but I'm going to use autoloaders with clips for, for this particular gun. Um, you can either use the solid one, uh, solid clips or the non, or the, the see-through clips, uh, the normal clips, it doesn't really matter. They both function in the same way. Now with this, I'm uh, with these clips, I'm going to attach them to the autoloader. Uh, notice with the clip, the uh, the clip has three three pointy pegs and one really fl one flat peg. That flat peg needs to be attached to the autoloader. So uh, it needs to be attached to the autoloader on the side with the you know that lets the clip attach to it. So if I attach the uh, attach three clips to these three autoloaders, just like that, and uh, so that that's all hooked up correctly. Now. Um, now we need uh, ammo input feeders. So each autoloader needs at least one ammo input feeder. So uh, I'm going to go grab the ammo input feeder. And uh, you can attach the ammo input feeder. You have to attach um, each autoloader needs its own ammo input feeder. So if I attach one ammo input feeder here, it's not going to put ammo into the other two uh, the other two autoloaders. It'll only put ammo into this autoloader here, so I uh, will put an ammo input feeder on each of the um, on each of the clips. You can also attach the ammo input feeders to the autoloaders, so like that. You can attach the ammo intakes to the autoloaders themselves, and if you do that, the um, if it doesn't matter whether or whether uh, if if you've got an autoloader with a clip. And you attach the uh, the ammo intake either to the clip or to the directly to the autoloader. It doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. The uh, the ammo intakes will put ammo into the clip, even if you attach them directly to the autoloader. They will put ammo into the clip, 
And then what the autoloader will do is it will take ammo from the clip and put it into the gun. And uh, so just just with, uh, the same as that gun, we want to uh, open the menu for the ammo intakes and select our custom shell and force assign all intakes to this ammo source. And that there has turned that there has put all of the ammo intakes, even uh, all the ammo intakes that are attached to this gun, are now assigned to that particular shell. So uh, yeah, so now you can, uh, if you look at the if you look at the ammo clips, you can see inside of the ammo clips, you can see the shells. Shells are being loaded in all three of the ammo clips. Um, this gun here can now uh, this gun here can now be used. So if I manually control it I can turn it on the turret and I can fire it. Yep, fire pretty much just the same as the other gun. Right, um, so something I want to do is to compare autoloaders to putting the ammo input feeders directly on the firing piece. So if you the benefit of autoloaders is that they fire faster. So if I control both of these guns um, and fire both of them. So currently I'm stood in between the guns and I'm controlling both of them. If I, now that I'm controlling both of the guns, I can now fire them both simultaneously and they will both fire. And to begin with, they will both fire at the exact same time. But as we go on, you should notice that the gun on the left, which is the autoloader gun, and the gun on the right, which is the direct input feeder gun, you should notice now that the autoloader gun, which is the left one, is uh, firing more quickly than the gun on the right, which is the direct input feeder one. Um, that, uh, the benefit that you get with the autoloaders, the slightly faster fire rate I in general, is that um, uh, you, you know, that's counteracted by the fact that the autoloaders take up more space. So, as you can sort of see here, this takes up way more space than what putting the ammo in text directly on the firing piece does. Um, so you're sacrificing space, you're sacrificing more space, so you need a bigger area, to, you know, a bigger turret to fit this gun inside of, as opposed to this gun here. Um, uh, so, but you gain more, you know, more uh, rounds per minute, which is, uh, you know, quite a good trade-off. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, those are the two very basic, uh, you know, barely functional guns. These guns are not good, you know, they're only just barely functional. Um, something else I wanted to cover briefly um, is I wanted to just sort of go over controlling the guns. Um, controlling the guns, just the same as controlling any other gun in FDD. Just put on a local weapon controller and then connect it to the AI. So I'll just connect one. Oh, hello. Uh, just connect one of these guns for now. Just put on an, uh, a wireless receiver. The AI already has a wireless transmitter on it, so this here is hooked up. Right now, if I were to spawn in an enemy, so if I go with the Warus from the Deepwater Guard, uh, you can see that the AI has already controlled the gun and has, point, oh, uh, has already pointed out the enemy. So if I turn off the AI for the Warus, because we're not interested in the Warus fighting back, we're just interested in our guns firing at it. So uh, if I move the camera, so you, you can sort of you can move the camera over to the Warus, which is all the way over here, uh, all the way over here, and you can sort of just about see the green lines, which are the shells, and you can sort of see the explosions there as some of the shells are hitting. You can also see that some of the shells, like that one, the one just now, see that some of the shells are bouncing. You can see some of the shells are oh, that one bounce, that shell there bounced off the water. Um, but yeah, you can see even when even when the shells do hit, they're doing very very little damage. I mean, you might see the occasional block being knocked off, like that block there. Um, so it does very little damage these shells, and that's just purely uh, purely due to very bad you know, very bad shell design, and the fact that the gun is pretty small. Generally, the smaller the gun, the less damage it's going to be doing. So, um, yeah, uh, this uh, this particular shell here, you might notice uh, on occasion that there's some of the shells are bouncing like that. That, again, is just due to poor shell design, just because we designed the shell within a few seconds. 
Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's it for what I wanted to cover in this video. Um, in the next video, hopefully, I'll be able to go over um, the I want to go over the uh, the shell customizer for the uh, different shells, so we can get a bit more of an interesting shell rather than just this you know this bright yeah you know, this quite bad shell that we're firing currently. So um yeah so uh, that'll be in the next episode and uh thank you for watching this particular episode i do hope this is shorter the previous episode it felt it because i did it in almost one go so there you go right okay so uh as always uh, cheerio